Numbers. That's Numbers, the 14th chapter and verse 1. That's Numbers 14 and 1. When you find that, amen, begin to read from the later Brown, you will. And all the congregation lifted up their voice. And all the congregation lifted up their voice. Read. And cried. Uh -huh. And the people wept that night. And the people cried all that night. They cried all that night. Read. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Now, that's what I want to talk about. Murmuring and complaining. Murmuring and complaining. And the children of Israel murmured against Aaron, the servant of the Lord, and against Moses, God chosen man. Why are they murmuring against Aaron and Moses? You know. Seem like no matter what you do, you never can make everybody happy. Okay. You sell one storm, all of a sudden another fire begin to brew. Read what it say. And the whole congregation said unto them, Watch what the congregation said. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. It would have been better if we could have died in Egypt. Somebody say, get out of Egypt. Get out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. Come on, read. Or would God, we had died in this wilderness. And we had died in this wilderness. Read. And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land. Now, here we come. The Lord brought us to this land. To fall by the sword. That our wives and our children should be a prey. Mm. Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? Now, in other words, you can close the book right there. They were saying, God made a mistake. They complained against Moses. Elder, they complained against Abraham. Now you look at it, you see the real complaint was against God. <laughs> it would have been better if we would have died in Egypt. In other words, God, you brought us out here to die. Why, why did you do all that? You could have let us stay right where we were. At least we would have died in a place we can call home. It's bad when you take on the authority of your own mind to make decision on what's good and what's bad. They really was complaining against God. 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 They took their anger and their frustration out on something they can see, which was Moses and Abel. They can see him. Or they can see them. But they really had a beef with God. I could do bad by myself. You didn't brought us out here to this wilderness. We out here about to die. We could stay where we were. Throughout the history of sin that God has always brought up in the crossing of the Red Sea. God has always brought up the leaving or departing out of Egypt. God has always brought up when it comes to the wilderness and shown him as being weak and defeated when it comes to the children. You don't really see them giving him the glory. Give him the honor and the praise. Lord, I thank you for bringing us out from a past master. Lord, I thank you for bringing us out from bondage. Lord, I thank you for carrying us through the Red Sea. Lord, we appreciate and adore you for what you've done, how you destroyed our enemies. Babe, I'm here to tell you, you gotta keep a thank you in your mouth. Huh? No matter how I feel, how I look, how I see, I gotta thank you in my mouth. I lost my car. Thank you, Jesus. I lost my child. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever I lost, whatever I experienced, I still have a thank you in my mouth. I thank you for the good. Huh? I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the up. I thank you for the town. Lord, I thank you for the good. Lord, I thank you for the bad. Lord, I thank you for the good. Lord, I thank you for the bad. Lord, I thank you for the good. Lord, I thank you for the bad.
thank you. Lord, I 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 thank you. I thank you for life. I thank you for health. I thank you for strength. He is my everything. They didn't know how to operate and walk in thank you and gratitude and thanks. But instead, they walk in murmuring and complaining. No matter what, and that's a whole lot more to the story. I really, I'm going to take time and break down chapter 14, verse by verse, as we look into it, but not right now. I just want to touch this little train of thought. Learn to be content. Especially when you call yourself following God. Learn to be content. Right. Now, if you follow a man, I can understand the slips and the fall. If you follow a man, I can understand the frustration and the aggravation. If you follow a man, I can understand what in the world is he or she trying to do. But when I say I'm following God, then I got to say to myself, sink or swim, do or die. Hell or high water, it don't really matter. I trust God. I trust he's going to bring me out. I trust he's going to make a way. I trust he's going to open the door. I trust he's going to turn it around. I trust him for deliverance. I trust him for my healing. Whatever it is, whatever it takes, I trust God. This is what you got to come to instead of murmuring and complaining. And as we begin to dissect the book of Numbers, especially the 14th chapter, you're going to see a bunch of just complaining and complaining and complaining, oh. complaining. Instead of saying, Lord, I thank you. Oh, I thank you for the land you've given me. Mm. And that's one of the things we're going to deal with and talk about, too. Let me just kind of bite into it just a little bit, and we're going to call it quiz. If God is giving me something, why can't I show gratitude and thanks? Why I got to complain about what he gave? We find the children of Israel was complaining about what God had given and they have not received it yet. If you complain about what I'm about to give you, what you going to do when I give it to you? They was complaining about the land and had not tread on the soil yet. But they had a murmur. They had a complaint down in there. Don't allow your current situation to dictate to you your future outcome. They were used to the leaks. They were used to the garlic. They were used to saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir, boss. They were used to, I can't look at me in the eye. <laughs> God. They were used to being slaves. They were used to being attacked and beaten. They were used to having a hard task put on them. And people over them until they could come into the reality that God is taking me to another level in my life. When you don't operate in the fullness of God, you are self-abuse, neglect, defeat. Come on. You will live in weariness. You will live in isolation, even in your mind. They sit the own self. That's, not, that's the danger of being slave and enslaved. You can be a slave to turn out be enslaved to the things you're going through. Instead of going to it, you're going through it. God won't take them to it, but they can't get past going through it. <laughs> May I say it again? God won't take them to it, but they can't get past going through it. You got to first go through it in order to get to it. I got to go through it to get to it. And if God brought me through the Red Sea, I'm going to get to my land called Promise. If God brought me through the Red Sea, I'm going to get to my land called Milk and Honey. If God brought me through the Red Sea, I'm going to get to the land that God has ordered that I may have. He's going to give me my unexpected miracle, my unexpected blessing. I don't know what to expect on the other side of the river. He's unexpected. I trust him of his expectation. See, that's where it comes when I lean and depend on him. 400 years they cried. 400 years they were there in bondage. 
400 years they wandered around in Egypt. No identity at all as the children of God. Now God want to bring them out and say, I want to be your God. And they said, let's go back to Pharaoh. Let him be our God. Let the Egyptians be our lords. God want to take you to it. But you got to be willing to go through it. You want to go to the next level? Go through it. You want to see that anointing? Go through it. 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 Don't allow your current situation to dictate to you the outcome of your future. Go through it. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Stop looking back over your shoulders. Don't you know that when you're driving, you're supposed to look forward? That's right. Every now and then, sure, you look in your mirror to see what's behind you, but you don't focus on what's in the mirror. You focus on what's in front of you. Huh? The mirror will show you what's in the rear view. Mm -hmm. You glimpse at that and you keep going. You don't drive and keep on looking in the mirror. If you drive looking in the rear view mirror, what's going to happen? You're going to crash. Uh, another word, Brother V. That if I keep looking back while I'm going forward, I'm bound to crash. Lord, I better lead us along because I feel something to push me now. I'm saying that if I look back while I'm going forward, I'm bound to crash because everything behind me I did pass. Watch out now, y'all. So what's behind me is not the thing that counts, it's the thing that's in front of me. What's behind me I done got past it. You done got past your divorce. You done got past the separation. You done got past the hurt. You done got past the frustration. You got past the, my God, the repossession. You done got past the eviction. Whatever's behind you, you're on the bump and they say, I got past that now. I'm past it. 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 If I pass it, that tell me I must be my God. Gaining grounds. If I done got past the first my marker, huh? and I see a sign and talk about the second my marker. Huh? What I saw in the first my marker is behind me. Huh? I'm gonna spend as much energy turning around going back to see what I already left. Huh? I have the news for you. Huh? Once you're going forward, keep on going. Huh? Once you're going straight, keep on going. Huh? Once you're going forward, don't look back. Huh? It's a dangerous thing to look back while going forward. Huh? Every night. Take a glimpse and see where the Lord brought you from. Every now and then, look over your shoulder and see how God brought you out. But baby, beloved, I got a goal in mind. I got a goal in mind. I'm trying to reach a goal. If I don't get this crown, I got to look ahead. I got to look forward. We're up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Looking back while trying to go forward. You can't get nowhere. You lose ground doing that. God put eyes in front of you and not eyes behind you. You get a glimpse at what's behind you as a reminder of what you didn't see. But you keep your eyes looking forward if you want to make progressive steps. Give them a clap, praise.